Hey everyone, welcome to episode 22 of Sugidama podcast, the podcast about Japanese sake, the drink which could be wild and funky before it's tamed with heat. And this wild sake is called Nama or Namazake. But before we talk about it, let me tell you about our sponsor, London Sake, who have one of the widest selections of premium and craft sake available online today. You can choose from over 100 sake from 25 breweries and they will deliver across the UK and many European markets. And if you don't know what sake to choose, you can use simple online tasting notes together with very sensible and affordable food pairings to help you decide. What's more, you can get a 10% discount by just using the code SUGIDAMA, all caps, during checkout. London sake making sake simple. My name is Alex and I live in London. I am a certified sake specialist, sake judge, sake educator and sake advocate. Besides this podcast, I write on Sugidama blog about all things sake, publish tasting notes, overviews and information about sake events happening in London. Talking about Sugidama blog, I have recently published a review of so-called single serving or one cup sake. They are usually 180 to 100 milliliters sealed jars or cups, which you generally can buy at a train station or at convenience store, Konbini in Japan. But now they made their way here. Recently I have noticed that more and more single serving sake are appearing at sake and wine shops, online and offline, Japanese grocery stores and even at traditional supermarkets. I have recently seen a small 180 ml bottle of Sawanatsuru sake at my local Sainsbury's. So I decided to review some of them. Go to sugidama.co.uk and read the post if you would like to know more about this beautiful small form of sake. Oh, another thing. Sugidama podcast is now one year old. Yes, it's been 12 months of podcasting and we are at the end of the second season. I very well remember how I started working on this first episode in March 2020. I think I made the first record in um, at the beginning of April, but it took me quite a long time to release the first episode. My wife helped me a lot with it. She listened to all my first takes and gave me tons of great advice. Also, she was so kind to record the jingles you hear at the beginning, between the sections, inside and at the end of each episode. So I'm really grateful to her for all her help. Thank you very much. Now let's talk about Namazaki or just Nama. Nama can be translated from Japanese as life, raw, fresh or even natural. Namazaki is generally unpasteurized sake. You might remember from a mini-series about how sake is made in episodes 6 and 8 that normally sake is pasteurized twice, first time after pressing and the second time after bottling. The sake is usually heated up to 65 degrees Celsius, about 100 Fahrenheit, for 30 minutes. The process is called hiire and was already used by sake breweries in medieval Japan. The first mentioning of the process recorded in 1560, about 300 years before Louis Pasteur discovered pasteurization. This process likely came to Japan from China even earlier. There are records of monks stabilizing freshly brewed sake with heat long before that. The heat deactivates the enzymes which stop fermentation and kills unwanted bacteria. Without pasteurization, sake might get spoiled. The process involves either running the sake through a coiled metal pipe that is submerged in heated water or simply putting the bottles with sake into hot water. Namazake is sake which either hasn't been pasteurized at all or only once, either after pressing or after bottling. For a very long time, namazake could be only enjoyed 
at sake breweries after the sake was brewed. It was very difficult to transport unpasteurized sake without getting it spoiled. Even now, it's not unusual to open a bottle of namazake and find out that it's a dud. There is a Japanese word for the unpleasant smell in spoiled sake, hinika. It can be translated as old stink. It reminds a smell of Japanese pickles, tsukemono. While it's nice in pickles, it's completely out of place in sake. So if you smell pickles in sake, something is wrong with it. Let's now look at types of namazake. Given that there are three options in terms of pasteurization, not at all after pressing and after bottling, we have three main types of namasake. Completely unpasteurized sake is easy. It's pressed and let mature for a few months without heating up. Then it's bottled and shipped in refrigerated trucks. In restaurants and shops it has to be stored in fridges. So namazake is the wildest one of the nama bunch. It's fresh and lively, with a lot of stuff going on in terms of aroma and taste. While it's been pressed with all the maromi left behind, namazake still has a lot of enzymes switched on, who produce those sharp edges for which namazake is famous. Traditionally, spring is the season for namazake. Young sake, similar to young wine, is very attractive for its unruly character. It epitomizes spring itself. Everything is impatient, bursting with life and energy. Same with fresh nama, which just captivates you with its amazing aroma and taste feast. But it doesn't mean that you can't find namazake during other seasons. Of course, you can. Matured namazake, and I mean matured here as a step in the brewing process, when sake sits in a tank for 3-6 months after pressing. So matured namazake is quite common. It has more rounded edges, but still a wild character. A bottle of namazake is easy to recognize for its distinctive Chinese character on the bottle, nama. In Japanese, it usually has a warning that you have to keep the bottle in the fridge and consume as quickly as possible. But, and it's always but in, in the sake universe, some brews make nama which can be kept at room temperature for ages. Philip Harper is one of them, and his Tamagawa Nama Genshu red label can be left opened in the cupboard for months. I don't know how he does it, but it just gets better as it matures. The second type of namazake is sake, which is not pasteurized after pressing, stored in a tank for 3-6 months, and pasteurized just after bottling. It's called namachoso, which means stored nama. As it's stored and pasteurized, namachoso has a fresh and clean character, slightly mellowed by storage. It's usually enjoyed chilled. The third type of nama, called namazumi, which means it's bottled without pasteurization. So the sake is pasteurized after pressing and then stored for six months, bottled and shipped without the second pasteurization. As the sake is pasteurized before storage, it has a karma character. It's usually more mellow than namazake or namachoso. But namazumi still keeps those interesting aromas and flavors of unpasteurized sake. It's still fresh and lively. Let's go back to namazumi, the sake which is pasteurized after pressing, but not after bottling. One variety or style of sake which is usually namazumi is hiya oroshi. Hiya oroshi is ultimate autumn sake. Brewed in winter, early spring, pasteurized once and stored over summer, it's released in early autumn. It's usually the first sake of the season. Just to clarify, the sake brewing season starts usually in late autumn and ends in early spring, usually from November to April. But it depends on a number of factors, like rice for example. As you might remember from the episode 15, when I was talking about the most popular sake rice varieties, some of them are harvested earlier than the others. So here Aroshi starts appearing in Japanese sake shops, supermarkets and other stores in September. You would probably notice posters with sake and autumn leaves in the display windows. 
as sake is strongly associated with food, hiyaroshi is usually nicely paired with autumn food like roasted vegetables, stews and so on. However, you have to keep in mind that the term hiyaroshi is not legal, so some breweries take it quite liberally, calling their first sake of the season hiyaroshi, even if it's not namazume. Another term associated with autumn is akiagari or akibare. It's also autumn sake and the first name refers to the phenomenon of sake improving by autumn, getting more balanced and rounded, while the second name, akibare, means blue autumn skies, which I always find very, very poetic. Generally, hiyaroshi meant namazumi sake, akiagari usually referred to normally pasteurized sake. However, the difference has now almost disappeared, and these terms are often used interchangeably and mean the sake brewed in late winter, early spring, stored over summer and released in autumn. So if you see hiyaroshi or akiagari on the label, keep in mind that regardless of the name, the sake could be namazaki, namazumi, namachozo or just properly pasteurized sake. Ok, before we talk about other variations of namazaki and how namazaki tastes and should be stored, let me remind you about London Sake, our sponsor and their huge selection of curated sake sets, which provide a great opportunity to explore various styles and types of sake. Have a look, but don't forget about the magic word SUGIDAMA, all caps, to get your 10% discount. Ok. There are a few other terms associated with namazake. For example, shiboritate, freshly pressed sake. It's usually sold during the brewing season in winter. Again, it's not a legal term, just means that the sake is bottled and shipped right after pressing, which called shibori. I actually thought that shiboritate sake is always nama, but as it turned out, not necessarily. It can be pasteurized sake, but again, it's usually namazake. Shiburitate can be any grade or style. The main, so to say, feature of shiburitate is its freshness. It also differs from batch to batch. I read that shiburitate made in December has slightly different taste than the one made in February. I have to confess that I haven't tried shiburitate in my life. It's available outside Japan, but I'm yet to see it in London. Another type of sake, Kasei Seishu, we talked about in the previous episode about Nigori. It's also Namazake. Translated as active sake, it's unpasteurized Nigori sake with maromi solids left after pressing. So the fermentation process continues especially at a room temperature, resulting in fizziness like in champagne. Oh. There is also shinshu, which translated as new sake, and it's just sake released during the brewing year, which starts on July the 1st and ends on June the 30th of the following year. It might be any sake, not necessarily namazake. So if you see shinshu on the label, just don't assume it's nama. There is another type of nama, actually two, I would like to talk about. Nama Genshu and Nama Genshu Moroka. We were talking about them in the episode on sake types, I think episode 3. So Genshu is undiluted sake. You might remember that sake is usually brewed to 18-20% ABV and then diluted to 15-16%. It makes the sake easier to drink and paired with food and more acceptable for Japanese palate. Genshu means original sake, basically the sake before it's cut with water. So you have sake which is less treated, closer to its original form. And there's something people love about primordial things. Some roughness and energy. And if you would like to move even closer to the source, you have Nama Genshu Muroka, unpasteurized and undiluted sake which didn't undergo carbon filtration called Rocco in Japanese. Just to clarify, Shiburitate we were talking about a few minutes ago 
might be all that, but also could be, say, pasteurized futsushu, filtered and with added alcohol, sweeteners and amino acids. Nama, Genshu and Morocco are legal terms, as I understand. So if you see them, it's usually the real thing. Now, let's talk a bit about how Namazaki tastes and what are food pairing options here. The main thing in Namazaki which attracts people is its freshness and wild character. Namazaki's aroma profile largely depends on the underlying style. Like Ginju usually will be fruity or flowery, while Junmai more savory. However, the Nama element adds its own notes to the base aroma. A bit of rice and yeast, zesty overtones and very fresh feel. So you will have more tones and undertones in Namazaki compared to its pasteurized counterpart. In terms of taste and flavors, again, Namazaki has certain sharpness and complexity with a lot of wild and funky notes. Its umami component is much more prominent, especially in Junmai Nama. So it works very well with grilled meat and fish, salty food, oily and creamy dishes, but again, it depends on the style of a particular Nama. For example, Daiginju Namazaki will be fine to drink on its own or with gently flavored food like cauliflower, cheese, grilled white fish, while Junmai Nama will be terrific with spicy food like fajitas, Thaio Indian curry, chili con carne, this type of food. So when you are deciding on the food to have with your Nama, consider all factors, style, type and variety of the sake. A few words about how to store Namazaki. Unopened, it can be stored for a few months in a fridge. But don't wait too long before drinking it. It's quite unstable compared to pasteurized sake, so it might go off at some point. When a bottle of Namazaki is opened, try to drink it in the next couple of days. It will start losing its freshness straight away and also can go off. Namachozo and Namazumi and Hiaoroshi in this regard are more stable than totally unpasteurized Namazaki. But still you have to be careful. Namagenshu is also more stable due to the higher alcohol content. I mentioned Philip Harper's Namamuroka Genshu, which just gets better with time, but it's quite an exception. Also keep in mind that when Nama is off, it's not really poisonous. It's just unpleasant, so you are unlikely to have food poisoning if you drink it without realizing that it passed its expiry date. Another thing, when you buy Namazaki, just check if it's been properly stored at a shop. It normally should be kept in the fridge, though I saw Nama on normal shelves a couple of times in shops that know how to sell and store sake. But in most of the cases, it should be taken from a fridge when you buy it. And keep in mind, if you bring it home, open and smell that something wrong with it, Hinika smell for example, take it back to the shop and explain that you think it's off. If you intend to keep Namazaki for a few weeks in the fridge before opening, then it's better to wrap it in paper just to make sure that it's not exposed to sunlight. I have a bit unusual choice for sake of the episode this time. It's Kikusui Funaguchi Nama Gensho Honchoza, sold in a small 200 ml aluminum can since 1972, the first commercial Namazaki, as I have been told. Kikusui Brewery is located in Niigata, famous for its style of sake. As we know, unpasteurized sake has three main enemies – air, heat and light. Expose it to any of them and the sake will get spoiled. So the brewery came up with a very clever solution for its time. An aluminium can. The aluminium protects the namazaki from the light while filling the can to the brim with 200 ml of sake instead of the usual 180 ml reduced the amount of air and oxidation. With the fridge at most Japanese homes at that time, the heat was not a big problem. As Funaguchi's Nama Genshu, it makes the sake even more stable. 
Kikusui Funaguchi Nama became an instant hit when released and started a Namazaki boom, which is still going on. The great thing about Funaguchi Nama is that it ages pretty well. Leave it in the fridge for a year and its profile will change. The color will change to amber and the taste will become more mellow and deeper with a nice velvety texture. And you can keep it unopened in the fridge for quite a while. I'm thinking to buy a few cans and try to age them, opening one a year and see how it changes. So, Funaguchi Nama is medium sweet sake with a fruity aroma and a clean finish. It's a bit stronger than your usual sake, but it makes it perfect to have on the rocks. It's great chilled as well. The sake is amazing with savory spicy food like Korean fried chicken, burritos or Thai curry. It's also very good with cheese if you would like to have it on its own, but still want some nibbles. The small factor makes a perfect sake to have if you would like just to relax with a glass of sake in the evening or weekend. It's great in any season. And as I said, you can have it on the rocks in summer, but also heat it up a bit in winter. The sake is included in my recent review of single serving sake on Sugidama blog together with four others. Enjoy! That's it for today. I'll be back with more episodes. In the meantime, buy a namazaki and try it. I actually saw quite a lot of namazaki in small 300 ml bottles, so you can buy a few different ones and compare. Kikusui Funaguchi Nama is available at London Sake website, though they sell it in a pack of three. So you can buy it, drink one and leave the two other to age for a year. Drink another and leave the last one for another year. Well, in case you have strong will. Don't forget that you can get 10% discount by entering SUGIDAMA all caps at the checkout if you buy there. I also saw a few namasake in small bottles at Japan Center and some other shops. And in autumn you can always try to get Hiyaroshi sake. World sake imports usually bring Masumi seasonal sake every year. Look at my website sugidama.co.uk, I've got a constantly updated tasting notes section and a lot of posts with recommendations, including about Hiyao Roshi. A few of them are about Namazaki as well. If you have any questions or suggestions about any sake topic, just drop me a line. I have started thinking about season 3 already and any feedback would be great. My email address is alex at sugidama.co.uk or you can find me on Instagram or Twitter at Sugidama blog in one word. Again, if you like the episode and want more, hit the subscribe button and you will get every new episode downloaded in your player as soon as it's out. If you would like to give me a bit of support, please leave a review. There are two places you can easily do it. One Apple Podcasts, if you use iPhone, iPad or Mac. Go to the Sugidama podcast page there. Scroll down to the bottom where you can see reviews. There will be a link to add your review. Another option is Podchaser website, where you can leave a review to any podcast regardless what platform you use to listen to. I've got a link to my page there in the show notes. You need to register at uh, Podchaser, but it's easy because you can use your Twitter or Facebook credentials and then leave a review. Of course, you can share this podcast with your friends, on your social media, chat apps, anywhere. A lot of people mention a friend's recommendation as a reason for listening to a particular podcast. So it's a great way to popularize Sugidama podcast. Thanks a lot for listening. Kampai. Suge 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 dama blog suge 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 dama blog